Well afternoon boys and girls, hope you're well. This is my uh, come back to course fishing part one. Well, two days ago, I mean Thursday evening, I spotted out eight kilo of pellet and sweet corn here, and now it's time to fish it. A bit rusty at it, I've just been getting the gear ready, all the old pole box and the quivers and everything. That's been a long while since I've done that. <laughs> I'm using all the contraptions, I ain't proper rod rests and stuff, I just use an old pole rests and stuff, but that'll do the job. And the old uh, lander net is out, ready to go. Everything's done and dusted, I think I've got everything I want out. I just mixed up the ground bait with some more, well, the scalded pellet with some more ground bait to loosen it up. All right, I just left it here to absorb a bit more of it. That's getting there, because obviously that's just scalded pellet really. And that's really lumpy and solid, but I'll mix some ground bait with it to lighten it up. Because obviously scalded that pellet last night, it's all got a hemp in it and lovely. And also, I'm a jug full of water. You can't beat a good jug. I've got two of them, because everyone like a nice pair of jugs. I always leave a jug with a bit of water in it so I can rinse my fingers, because obviously getting ground bait that stick and clammy and I don't want to keep getting up and down. So I've got a jug full of water and the old ESP towel there and I think that's all I need really. I haven't put the end gear on yet but I'll soon do that. One thing's a bit worrying, I rinsed out my bucket in the margin two days ago. And if you can see it's all that ground bait and corn still in the margin. Well, what's happening there? You thought the small fish would have mopped that up or birds but are still sitting there. Been a lot, ain't that many birds on in there, but why is that still sitting there on the bottom? Look out a bit, there's still bits and pieces in the deeper water. I don't understand why it's still there and nothing's at it. Has it changed that much when it comes to fish wise? I don't know, but this might be uh, not too clicky. <laughs> Time will tell in a minute when I get set up and cast out. But I just can't believe that bait is still in the margins there. Thought swans would have had that at least, let alone fish, but I can see a few fry in the margins. Well, the only hook bait I've got is corn. I thought, well, that's what I uh, fed the other day, and they always used to, like corn in there, the bring in attention, love a bit of corn. So I thought, corn, corn it is. If I use maggots, yeah, I'll probably get a few silverfish, but I don't really want silverfish. I really want just bring more tench, really. Look at that, Christ on a bike. I almost look professional. <laughs> I ain't done it in donkey's years, so it's took me a bit longer. Bits and pieces have come back from the old carp fishing days and match fishing days, should I say. But yeah, it's actually looking quite professional. Whatever next. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy how it's gone. I really am. Well, I just cast out and the tip's starting to knock already. That left hand rod is keep tapping. Probably small fish, but we'll see. That's looking good. <laughs> well, I've gone big wise, quite basic really, but I have done different on each rod. But I'll see on this rod, I'll put a little float stop on, gone through my swim feeder, rubber bead, swivel, and then I got, say, an 18 inch hook length with a size 10 semi barbed hook on it or a micro barbed hook if you look here obviously that the bead protect the swivel and obviously that go along and stop and hit that at any angle that'll stop on that but if it's straight on or a bit of a struggle look that'll, that'll actually pass through so that's a safe semi bolt rig as such because most of the time that'll be at an angle and that'll hit that and that'll pull the hook home but if it's directly on, so look at any other part of the line part, that can pull through. So yeah, that's a basic little rig. And yeah, that's what I'm going to use. And this is the other rod. Basically it's a bit more carpy. It's got the tail rubber, feeder, safety clip, swivel, and then another about 18 inches snud to a hook. Well, the main line is about six pound, I think the main line is. And the snud or hook length is 3.2 pound, or as everyone's saying nowadays, 0.12 mil. <laughs> so both basic rigs. But let's see how they go. Just a bit of a comparison, really. All right, these hooks may seem big 
<coughs> to the average match angler, but I went a match angler, done it before, but for a couple of grains of corn, a size 10 hook will be fine. Oh, what's that? First fish. Oh, missed it. That's a cracking little, little rod, isn't it? A golden colour. Just dropped him, but that's a little rod. I'll get him back. First blood. Well, that didn't take long. I'm going to make two minutes of me casting out. That had done it. So, surprising. On double corn. Size 10 hook. But, prove they're hungry little buggers. But, who would want to eat that? Nom, nom, nom. Well, I'm trying to reel in, but the little buggers are big bank of weed out there. That's bloody hard work to reel through. Yeah, that's a good bank of weed, that is. Big bank of weed. Put another rod on the end. I hope I'm not going to be uh, inundated with rod, rod and more rod. <laughs> Looking that way, innit? Yeah, the rod tips are constantly going. I think I might have created a rod pit. <laughs> See, that left one's not going to start to go around already. Just constant. I think all that pre baiting is probably every single rod within 100 mile. Well, I think I've done it again. Rod pit. Plenty of weed there, there's a bank of weed. But there's another one. Not exactly what I wanted. But at least with the big hooks are easy to unhook. Just get him back. So there's a fair bit of weed. But you can live with that. Hopefully as it get dark, some bit big will push them rod right away. Be nice. All it seems to be is rod, rod and more rod. As soon as I cast out the tip wrap round, that's going to be another rod. I think I'm just now pulling that rod through that uh, weed. Yeah, I'm sure there's a rod with plenty of weed on it. Yeah. All the same sort of stamp. Only a few inches each one. There seem to be a lot of them. But they're cracking condition. Oh! Well, they were cracking condition until I dropped them. <laughs> Slimy little buggers. Oh! Another bite. Can you guess what it is yet? I think it's obvious, isn't it? Another rod. This place is alive with them. Get the old trusted to score droop. See, another rod. I hope not be able to get through them because it's alive with the bloody things. And guess what? Bite straight away. It's been seconds. And another rod. That's alive with them, isn't it? This place has certainly changed. There never used to be this many rod in there. That's alive with them now. Wonder if we can ever get through them, that's the thing. And guess what we've got here, kids? Oh, would you believe it? Weed and little rod. Basically, it's constant. Rud, rud, and more rud. It's alive. And the other rod has just gone slack at the same time. I'm just getting every cast of it. You can't really use two rods. I don't know why I'm trying. 
but as soon as it's in the water, bang, 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 tips bang around like hell. Might just seem alive with rod. Yeah, the only reason I come to Rollsby really is because that's the first place I ever fished fresh water. I used to come here when I was a kid with my granddad. He's the one who taught me fresh water fishing. Because my, my dad and he's on the sea in the boat, really. I used to come here and catch a load of bream with my granddad, bream and tench. And roach and rod and a few rough and one or two gudge and not many of them. But it used to be good days years ago. We used to plenty of fish. But now it seems like the otters have gone through all the bream and the bream in here and it's just rud, rud and more rud. I've never known to be so many rud. The place is alive with them. That must be like knee deep. I've never known nothing like it, but that's all good fun. As soon as the gear at the water, us, the tips bang, 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 round in seconds. It's unbelievable. And guess what, kids? What have we got? Another little rod. That's literally within a minute of casting out. Let's go on mad and a rudder cast. I should have bought the pull. But they ain't huge rudder, they little old things. That's surprising. I might have to change tactics to get through these. Well, you've got to adapt and change. All I think I'm going to get all night if I carry on doing what I am is loads and loads of rudder. So what I've just done, got a little tub, a sticky baits, pineapple pop-ups. And I just tied a little pop-up rig. I need like size like 10 mil boilie and a little 10 mil hook. Just put a shot on it. Before we obviously push it in, just test it in my lucky jug. Yeah. Just think. You don't want it too heavy, just think so it'll be perfect that will. Well the roach the rod won't be able to get through that, will they? So the swim feeder is going to come off and I'm going to put a method feeder on with a bit of tubing. Because basically, I can put, because obviously I made up that crumb, but I've also got another kilo with just scalded pellet. So that scalded pellet is really sticky. And I can mould it around that. And that's taken ages to get off it, for the rod to get it off there. So hopefully that'll give me a bit more time for the tench to find it. That main major thing is getting through them rod to the tent. I think the tent are there, it's just getting through them. So hopefully this might help. I'm going to stick one rod out and see how it goes. Well, this is attempt number two. If you look in here, I've got some of that scalded pellet. Because obviously, anyone who watched the videos see I scalded a load of pellet yesterday. So I just, for the, for the ground bait today, just got that scalded pellet mixed with some crumb to loosen it down a bit because it's stodgy as hell. Now, that's ideal to do what I'm now going to do. So you've, got, so you've got the method feeder. With these rod, they'll get that ground bit off there in seconds. With this stuff, this scalded pellet, is a bit like plasticine. So I can mould it on there. Too much there. Mould it on there, and I ain't going to get that off in a hurry. Not like a ground bait. So, and then with a 10 mil pineapple pop up on the end, that's going to hopefully get through to the tench what the rod stop. It's not going to come off there very easily. That's all we can try. But this way, I'm just going to get a million and one rod. So let's try this. Don't know how well you can see them tips, but the left hand tip keep knocking, but the right hand tip is sitting still, obviously. One's got the corn on, and the other one has uh, got the pop-up. So hopefully that pop-up will keep the roots away. Look like it's doing it. Oh, just got one. Sure, there's a fish on there. Is that a trusty little root? I mean rod. As we crusted, one rod and a bit of weed. 
There is literally tons of these rod in here. See, look, look right on the bottom, look. They're quite wiggly little buggers. And on the corn, I think that's really the story of the night. Rud, rud, and more rud. Just cast out again, and I think that's, I've actually took it on the drop. <laughs> that is a, never seen so many rud in my life. It's basically, couldn't hardly hit the deck and another rod. Oh, that was a bit better one. But that had been out there less than a minute. Another rod. Let's hope we get a tench on the other rod. I think that's any chance. Well, I've just reeled in the rod with the pop-up. Oh, there's a little bit of weed on it. As you can see there, there's still some feed left on the method feeder. So obviously, them rod are struggling to get that off. So at least there's a bit of feed there in case anything else turn up. Because obviously on the ground bait, we're all full up the feeder. That's gone in seconds, but here, that's still feeding them. Let's hope we get a tench. Well, I did forecast rain, but it's turned to be a cracking evening. The old sun's out, it's up to you smashing it is. Really nice evening. I did put a plate of suntan cream on before I come out, because I'd burn in the dark, but yeah. It's been a cracking afternoon, last couple of hours. We had tons and tons of rod. I only video a few of them because I start to get a bit boring and keep catching them. But that's alive with them. I've never known there to be so many rod in this place. Maybe with a lack of bream, they're taking up the part in the food chain. They're eating the feed what the bream used to eat, and that's why they're so successful. I don't know. I feel a lot of the time I ain't actually fishing because uh, the corn's being taken off the hook on the drop. So what I've just done is just gonna put a fake caster on there, or a fake maggot, look like a fake caster. Oh, Enterprise rubber one. So at least there's always something on the hook. Got to be worth a try, it. That seemed to work. I was getting a few bites banging straight away. As soon as it hit the bottom more on the drop, the, rod, the tip was banging around like hell, but after a couple of knocks, that was gone. So look, you look on there, I've still got the, still got the plastic on the hook, plastic maggot or caster. So it's always, some, it's always a bit of feed, a bit of visual. Worth doing, so he's fishing with nothing. I think they're hitting the corn so hard, and most of the time there's nothing on the hook, that's why I'm not probably get a fish straight away or not at all plastic fantastic well that was definitely worth doing definitely worth sticking that bit of plastic on there that means I'm getting a fish every cast without fail I think a lot of the time I was dropping them as I was dropping through the water I was, they were nipping the corn off and there was no bait there. Obviously that plastic ain't coming off. That bit, that plastic maggot ain't coming off, so there's always bait there. Definitely worth having a pack of the old Enterprise casters in your box. Well, I haven't recorded it for quite a while because the mate come down and we've been yarning about general bits and pieces. But all I've been doing is having a few more rud. I must have had 20 to 30 rud now. But nothing else, just rud, rud, and more rud. I ain't had nothing on the pop-up either, but every 20 minutes, half hour, I've been reeling it in, rebaiting the method feeder and casting it back out, but I've had nothing on it. Just rud, rud, and more rud on the rod with the corn on it. But there must be quite a few pike and perch in here, because as it's now starting to get dark, just in front of me down here in the margins, there's been fry everywhere and they've been jumping up here, there and everywhere, so it's not a pike or perch uh, following them. So, yeah, I was hoping I'd get a few more, a bit more fish, but I got told by a man who's in the know that down here, 
there's so many rod in here now that all that pre that I'd put out, there'd be gone within an hour because I'd just eat and eat and eat. And yeah, but for the last 20 minutes, it's gone caught on the rod front. So I'm hoping that uh, might be a tinch or two moved in. That's a problem. You don't put enough feed in to get past the rod to bring the tension. But as you see now, I start to get darker, so hopefully I might get one or two fish now. That'd be very nice. See, look, there's got to be a perch or something down here. That's going mad every few minutes. Got to be a perch or a little tiny jack. Scaring these little fry about. Going mad. Obviously typical when I uh, video it, they didn't do it, but I sod the door, it's going to happen in that. <laughs> Since it started getting dark, it's gone really quiet. The rod tips ain't moving now. All right, one well, the pop-up one hadn't really moved, but the other ones, within a few minutes or seconds of hitting the water, first minute or so, that was, the tip was banging around like hell, either until the corn was gone or you had a fish. And that's just not really doing anything. Very, very strange. Hopefully a few tension moving in and push the old rod off, that'd be nice. Ignore but hope, but I thought if that's going to happen, that already happened already, but who knows. What's now? What's time? I think the time is precisely about five to nine, so it's only about another half an hour light. So hopefully, if we don't get one soon, that'll be, it'll be packing up. Well, it's half past nine, nearly dark. It looked a lot lighter on this camera for some reason. But it's nearly dark, and I'm going to call it a day. I've fished since about half three four o'clock it's now nearly half nine so i'll give it a good stint unfortunately this place is now full of rod i think that uh eight kilo of bait i put in probably got eaten in 10 minutes that's a live of rod well i didn't have a i ain't got a keep net but i had about 35 maybe 40 of them little rod obviously don't need a video them all, nor want to see every single one. As much the muchness you've seen one, seen them all. Well, hope you enjoyed watching. Something a bit different. And that'll be the end of the sun. Alright, catch you later. Thank you. Bye.